welcome to my channel. Well, you see, Goofy's got his his helm on. See, it's pretty secure. Um, I hope that doesn't embolden him to get even more goofy. But what we have here today is another great knife kit sent by Toby and family. It's RRCS6, Custom Shop 6, I guess. And I've already taken it out. I haven't put it together or anything yet. But look at that glue, and I'll, I'll come up to that here. Here's your different parts. This is a, a back lock, all right? So you got the blade. You got the... Uh, what is this guy? Part of the mainspring, I guess. Yeah, that's the main. No, this is the mainspring. Huh. Oh, that's your uh, unlock. That's your unlock bar. I was looking at it like, what the hell is this? Somehow it pivots down and toggles this, I would guess. All right. So, this comes with... Um, Pretty generous instructions here. Let me get them all out. Unfolded so we can see it. General assembly instructions. Look at this. Level of difficulty. Beginner? Nah, nah. Don't even try this. Intermediate? Nah, you should keep working. Yeah, advanced, you're ready for it. Um, Pattern specific parts, you know, so for lockbacks, you get one blade, one lock bar, and one back spring. Um, you also get the scales and the covers, right? Oh, it's pattern specific parts. Okay. Um, so this is what we've got right here liners with bolsters attached. All right. Now, if you if you go back into the instructions here, it says lay out all the parts, tape the edge to keep from cutting yourself. Sand one each side of each handled material to be fitted against the knife so it's flat. You know they've already done this. This whole procedure they're talking about here. They've already done that. But man, look at this glue. And I know you're going to finish it and come with it. Look at that, man. If you if you're ever going to do something on your own and you think, "Oh, I don't know. I'm not I'm not that accurate." I bet you could put it together better than that. I bet you could slap glue on better than that. But uh these are spot welds right here. So, yeah, you could finish this a little bit if you wanted to, but Really, the only finishing part is just going to be to smooth down your bolsters. I mean, your your transitions here. Where This is where you're going to eliminate your glue when you do your sanding and stuff. Um, but really, they've done most of the work for you. You know? You just basically have to... Let, let's, let's instructions are down here. See, it's always talking about... Uh, it talks about here how to epoxy, you know, your liners together, but that's already been done. And then it tells you to use a Dremel tool with a sanding band to... See, if you had these handles beforehand, before you were going to glue on, you could do a lot of your finishing before you attach it. You know, right now, to get down there, you're going to come close to... Now, of course, all this is going to be buffed later, so you don't have to worry too much about sanding this down. But if if your bolsters were already good, like that other one, like that Laguli or whatever, let me get it. It's right over here. If the if the bolsters are already good, then you don't want to sand down on here. You don't want to glue this first and then sand on it. I would think you would want to take this down as much as you can before putting it on, right? And then you glue or, or pin. Because I know from a fact of trying to sand some of this stuff down, you're going to scratch the hell out of this, this area right here in your sanding process. 
and it's hard to get it's harder to get this way i mean you could take a file i've got these jeweler files that uh they're smooth on this edge but they've got the serrations on here so you can go back and forth like this all you want and you're not going to scratch this you know like you would with a file anyway it's just another interesting little one to uh to put together and uh i think this one will actually be easier to finish because a lot of the you know the gluing and stuff is already done and then one of the instructions that says you're in, you need to drill the liners and everything I think over here it tells you materials needed where is it here You'll need the following materials. Epoxy, you don't need that. Masking tape, yeah, maybe. Sandpaper, shim stock. Now, that might be just to make your, your blade go centered. I'm not exactly sure what the shim stock, I know what we use shim stock for. Um, now, if it's just around the bolster and you say, well, I don't have a lot of shim stock. If you've got feeler gauges, which I, I do, I have some of those because feeler gauges in lock picking you could pick you know like uh 20 thousandths or whatever feeler gauge and grind out a pick of your own and make you know picks like that so you don't have to <clears throat> you don't have to do the epoxy and uh you don't need to do the drilling now you might need a hammer vice with padded jaws well we can pad them jaws files yeah wire cutters and the wire cutters will cut your pins when they come up there but yeah it's it's a fairly detailed it's in english it's written by someone that looks like you know it wasn't translated from chinese so they're understandable there's not like weird spelling or weird things that are thrown in here Contour the handle to the desired shape with sandpaper. After shaping the desired effect, finish with the grit sandpaper. 220, 400, then 600. We can go higher than that because Toby sent me a bunch of sandpaper. Pin the handles to the liner through the countersink holes. Maybe necessary to peen. Let's just flatten out a small head on the pin to fit the countersink. With the liner and the pinhead flat on the surface, peen the pins. Well, the four ounce ball peen hammer. You know what? We're gonna we're, we don't have a four ounce ball peen hammer, but we do have a hammer, and uh, we're not gonna weigh the head and all that. But I understand what they're talking about. You don't want to get too smash smash heavy with it, but you want to have enough mass that you can flatten brass pins and stuff like that. So yeah, that's gonna be another interesting one. Now they make. Let's see. The more complicated ones. A multi-bladed one. You know, like a... This looks like a trapper. So you'd have two blades to deal with. But these are interesting. It's it's like um, Gizmo was talking about on a, on a comment about the knife kits and everything. Um, if some of these people that are super critical about fit and finish on knives and everything would try building one themselves, they might have a better appreciation <laughs> of what can go wrong on knife making because, <sighs> yeah, I already found out on just trying to attach handles how you can screw it up by getting your handles mixed up. So yeah, there you go, Goofy. He didn't get, he didn't get knocked over. Well, that's pretty good. So yeah, that's another one. Thank you, Toby and family, for another little kit that one of these days I'll put together. Um, I will do it. It's just I gotta I gotta be in the right put it together mood, you know. Because in your mind, a lot of times when you assemble things, you think ah, it's gonna go this easy. I'm gonna do this, this, and this. And you and you sit in your in your head, you think it's gonna take this amount of time. And then when you actually go to put something together, <laughs> you find out there's a little complication here, and there's a little thing here, and there's a little thing there, and sometimes you need special tools, and eh, it can snowball. It can snowball. But anyways, yeah, you just got to have the right frame of mind putting things together. You know, don't get impatient. Don't, don't try to do it super fast. Just take your time. 
do everything right, and uh, hopefully you'll be happy with the results in the end. So I'll, I'll go through these processes when I put them again. I'll put up a video of, uh, of building them and everything and what I went through. But um, there you go. It's a little quickie there for you. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.